couple of items that's important when conducting any military operation is that one, you need to be organized, and number two, everyone involved needs to know exactly what's going on. This is true of, like I said, any military operation, especially convoys. And the reason for that is because there are many moving parts, right? And we're talking about people being in places with the proper equipment. Similarly, you would do to a an assault, right? If you're in combat arms and you're doing an assault, it's important that everyone knows where you're gonna be, what you're gonna do, and what equipment you're gonna have so the operation can run smooth. I noticed that not only from personal observation, but also from scouring the, the blogs and forums that National Guard suffers from this a lot. And not to say that every active duty unit is hot shot squared away, but it's to say that this observation is especially true in the National Guard. One of the reasons for that, I believe, is because members of a unit spend years with the same unit and the same group of people, which means that, and especially in the same state, which means that they tend to go to the same training areas, the same locations every time, year over year. So it's easy to get accustomed to just knowing what you need to be. And a perfect example, I remember one year, uh, you know, the, the platoons were brief, they were briefing me and the commander on what they were gonna do, and they were all moving to different locations. So one platoon mentioned, you know, hey, we're doing a convoy brief, uh, PCCs and, 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 and stuff like that, and PCIs, I don't know why they say PCC and PCI. You're doing combat inspection or combat check, you're not doing both at the same time. Either way, uh, <laughs> and they briefed that to the commander. So I, I told the LT, hey LT, whenever you get to the brief portion, you know, shoot me a quick text, you know, give me a 10 minute warning and I'll run down there. I, I want to observe, you know, your uh, pre-convoy uh, brief. Bet. So I go, do go down there and first thing that I notice is that the LT just all of a sudden started randomly talking. And, and I paused him for a second. I said, hey, sir, where's your platoon sergeant? He's like, oh, he's over there dealing with whatever. He's like, all right, so you're missing a major component of your convoy, right, which is your platoon sergeant, your assistant convoy commander, essentially. Uh, where is, like, is everybody here from key personnel, whomever you need here, are they here? He's like, yeah, I think I got everybody here. Well, mistake number two. So mistake number one is you didn't have your number two guy in the convoy brief who should be well aware of any changes or any discussions or be able to answer any uh, logistical questions that the, the the convoy may have. And number two, you didn't know if you had everybody, right? So one way to make this better or make this uh, every, remember every movement, anything you do is a training opportunity in the National Guard because we have limited time, right? So one way to take advantage of this is first ask if your unit has an SOP for convoys, right? Uh, if your unit does not have an SOP on convoys, ask your platoon, right? If you're a squad leader or a team leader, make sure that, you know, see if your platoon has a, uh, as an SOP. As a platoon sergeant platoon leader, if your platoon does not have an SOP and a unit does not have an SOP, go ahead and develop your own. It's very easy. You can Google and maybe I even put a link down below. Uh, see if there's an SOP. If there's no unit SOP, develop your own, look it up online and then use one that you find on the internet and then develop it over time and propose it to the company commander and first sergeant and the XO and operation sergeant. Uh, propose it to them at, to be the unit SOP. Right? If you're a squad leader and a team leader and your platoon does not have one, develop that right? You need it. You need it to be clean, you need it to be organized. The more you prepare and the more informed the soldiers are as leaders, the easier your job will be. Your job won't be easy, it will be easier, meaning that there'll be less micromanaging and more managing. Right? Those are two different things. Micromanaging is when you say, hey, pick up this box and put it over there. Right? That's micromanaging. Managing is, hey, I need this load spread out in these vehicles, and here's the load plan. Get it done, you have two hours. That's managing. And then going back and, and supervising and adjusting if need be. Right? Because you need to move on to the next thing. If you have a, let's say, even a platoon size element, God forbid you have a company size element with 100 plus soldiers. But let's say you only have a platoon of about 35 soldiers. You can't possibly 
be micromanaging 35 soldiers. If you are, you already failed, right? If you are, you don't need squad leaders, you don't need team leaders, because you have effectively turned everyone into privates, right? So now you become a glorified team leader. The team leader should be doing that. Hey, private, you gonna help me get this box? Over there. And a team leader should be hands-on over there doing it with them. And if you're a squad leader, same thing, right? Squad leader, team leader, every position. Build it out. And they should have all the essentials, right? Roll call. That should be number one line. Roll call. Number two line, who, what, where, when, why, right? The five W's. And you can spread that out throughout a convoy brief. You can do very similar to an op order brief. And the one that I use for my unit is a modified version of an op order brief. What are the conditions going to be during a convoy tomorrow? Not what the day is going to be like and not what the location that I'm in, but any areas that we're going to be driving through, you know, at the time that we'll be driving through. Because at 06, it will not be the same temperature as 1300. What are the meal plans? What are the schedule halts? All these things are important, right? Even if it's not specifically applicable to your movement, have it in your convoy brief. And when you get to that line, just say not applicable. Or say skip, right? Close your support, skip. Read every line, get into the habit. So that way when you have a real convoy, you know what you're doing. How to call the SPs and RPs and checkpoints, what their low plan needs to be, what a manifest should look like, right? That low plan, that's your overlays, everything, right? Your con op, concept of operation. What are you doing, where are you going, who are you going with? You know, and when do you plan to do this? You don't wanna always be learning on the job at the time that you absolutely need to know the things that you are doing, right? You need to prepare in advance. So you're squared away when, you, when you're when you called to execute. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I'll see you on the next drive time. Peace.